Hello everyone, and welcome to this absolutely ludicrous build video rant discussion thing that I have before you. So, if you've been on the channel for a while, you'll know that one of the spells that I really like is the spell Magic Mouth. And over a period of time, I've figured out how to do a lot of really crazy things with this spell. And at the time of making the last Magic Mouth video, I actually wish that I knew what I'm about to drop on you guys. So, in previous discussions of Magic Mouth, I talked about how you can basically make a computer. I talked about how you can basically make databases and computers by the usage of programming the magic mouth to react to certain words and phrases and just stimuli around it. However, realistically, doing something like this, it just couldn't even really be done. And the reason why I'm saying this is that the big limit that you had to do this was spell slots. And yes, I've discussed how, you know, there are certain ways you can just completely bypass the need for Jade Dust as the material component. You can use Creation Bards, Performance of Creation, or you can use Illusionist Wizard's Illusory Reality feature. And then using those two features, you can make the Jade Dust real that you then use to fuel your spell's effect. And that was actually, for the most part, one of the more difficult parts of being able to just spam Magic Mouth. But then you reached the issue of needing to have enough spell slots for it. And even, even too, if you're a max level wizard or a max level bard, you only have so many spell slots. Or so I thought. So yes, so first of all, after further discussion with myself, Illusionist Wizard really is the surefire way to make a super computer database or even potentially artificial intelligence. Yes. I know that a lot of people are, some are very enamored by artificial intelligence, some are also very concerned by it. You actually have the ability to make artificial intelligence in D&D. What is artificial intelligence except just a very deep programming? What is it other than just this ability to almost in a way think and react, but it's not in a way that it is creative. It's not coming up with its own ideas. It's just drawing input from different things. Using Magic Mouth, you have the ability to create something like this, which blows my mind. And the reason of how you can possibly get away with this is a feature that I had overlooked. Yeah, so first of all, of course, Malleable Illusions is a really good feature. It lets you alter the illusions that you create. Illusory Reality allows you to make them real. Those two features allow you to get Jade Dust bypass the cost for magic mouth and then with malleable illusions it allows you to basically just reprogram any magic mouth that you've already cast as long as you know it's within your radius but the big feature that i completely overlooked that i completely did not think about is the feature spell mastery at 18th level you can choose one first level wizard spell and one second level wizard spell that are in your spell book you can cast these spells at their lowest level without expending a spell slot when you have them prepared. Using this, being an illusionist wizard, you can bypass the cost of the jade dust and you can completely negate the spell slots that you would have normally needed to cast Magic Mouth an infinite number of times. Let's say if we really wanted to just put some numbers to this, your average wizard has four first level spell slots, three second level spell slots, three third level spell slots, three fourth level spell slots, three fifth level spell slots, one sixth level spell slot, one seventh level spell slot, one eighth level spell slot, and one ninth level spell slot by 18th level, because that's the soonest this build would be able to come online if you were doing this any other way. Any other character comparatively at level 18 these are the spell slots for the most part that you would typically have if you're a full caster. So just bear with me. Being a wizard, you can also use your arcane recovery feature. Using this, you can basically get a combination of spell slots that is equal to or less than half your wizard level, which in this case would be 9. You have a total of 9 points of spell slots that you can fuel. So that gives you an additional four casts of Magic Mouth if you turned all of those spell slots into second level spell slots. So those are the numbers you're working with. 
Now let's see where the fun endurance comes in. So, very quickly, you have the ability to outpace a wizard, any other wizard, any other spellcaster doing this, easily. For example, using something as simple as Minor Illusion, which is a cantrip, you can then use Illusory Reality, make it real. So using this, you can use it to make the Jade Dust, make it real. And of course, Illusory Reality is the bonus action. So very simply, how it would work is action, cast Minor Illusion, bonus action, Illusory Reality, and then action, cast Magic Mouth. Which is saying that, you know, if your average round of D&D &D is about six seconds, that's six seconds to do Minor Illusion and Illusory Reality, and then another six seconds for Magic Mouth, which means you can fire off about five of these in a minute. If you were to do something similar with our regular full caster ratio, you would have burnt through an alarming number of your spell slots. So putting all this in perspective, if you were just a regular full caster, you could cast Magic Mouth about 16 times. And now let's say you went regular wizard, you could get Arcane Recovery and then give yourself an additional four castings of Magic Mouth, ramping it up to 20. Using the pattern that I just described, that means you would have burnt through about a quarter of your available spell slots for that day just for Magic Mouth. For one whole round of casting, for Magic Mouth, literally, if you were to cast Magic Mouth for an entire minute, just do this entire combo for a minute, you would have burnt through a quarter of your resources in that time. And that was the limitation. Yeah, of course it's late game, you have things like Wish, you have all this other stuff like DM Fiat and whatever, but even with that, this was always the limitation. This was always the limitation, this was something you were just never going to break through until Spell Mastery. Using these features, you can get all of your little objects in place. You can make pseudo-magical circuit boards that are all just whispering codes to each other and relaying information to be able to spit back out at you. You can create unlimited databases. You can create magical compendiums. And you can create artificial intelligence. The biggest issue I feel like you had with all of these things and making it just feel more, quite literally, intelligent and more responsive is just the amount of programming a player would need to do to create this. But regardless, imagine what you could do now by just taking Magic Mouth and then programming it to respond to a string of phonetics. Programming with such incredible nuance the triggering effect that you need in order for the Magic Mouth to relay a specific effect. Of course, yeah, this is like hundreds of thousands of code. And of course, you as a player would definitely not want to do this solo, but of course there are other ways around this. For example, you have things like simulacrum. Now of course, simulacrum spamming is something where it is very much so an overused build concept, especially with like very, you know, late game wizards. But the whole concept is this. Simulacrum, as a spell, allows you to basically make a magical clone of yourself. It has all of your abilities, all of your spell slots, and then the thing with Simulacrum is if you're a high enough level, that Simulacrum can also cast and make Simulacrums. And that Simulacrum can cast and make Simulacrums. And so on and so forth. So suddenly, the ability to just make it yourself, and that daunting task of being like, oh, I have to code all of this myself, it's not that big anymore because you can basically just make an army of yourself to do it for you. You know, I'd be thinking now, Smiles, wait, hold your roll there. With Simulacrum, any spell slot that they expend, they can't ever get back. So how are you going to be talking about this infinitely spamming mechanic with your Simulacrum army? Another very fun feature about the spell Simulacrum is this illusion that you make up has all of the statistics of the creature that it duplicates. The simulacrum has all of our features, all of our abilities, and this includes malleable illusions, illusory reality, and spell mastery. Using this alone means that our simulacrums can now make 
their own compendiums, their own supercomputers, their own artificial intelligence and input all of that code themselves. You can literally create an entire team, an entire castle of magical coders all by yourself. That is more of just the rant and the ramble that I wanted to give to you guys because it is crazy. And even too, there's so many other little synergies that you can make with Magic Mouth. You can take the actor feet, you can be a changeling, you can be a Kenku. And imagine how crazy all of these little synergies would be. And I feel like with this knowledge, I'd honestly love to hear what you guys would do with this in your own games. Is this something that you would actually want to experience as a player and just have a character that's trying to just make this ridiculous supercomputer? Would you want to be a player that actually gets to see a world where there's just magical AI and databases and computers just running around because of the work of one wizard that turned himself into an army? So regardless, as I was mentioning in my last Magic Mouth video, this is an absolutely insane spell. I really thought that I had dived about as deep as you could, and in this video I really got to showcase more of the updated thoughts that I've had with this spell, and I really hope that you enjoy it, and even to just get to try some of the stuff that I talked about here in your own games and campaigns. And even too, if you do actually get to try this stuff, I would love to hear it. I want to hear how this stuff goes, I want to hear about your adventures in it, the characters you create, and just your own stories with this absolute absurdity. But regardless though, that is all the time that I have today for this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like and subscribe for even more D&D content. And in the meantime, keep smiling, keep scheming, and I'll see all of you next time.